We're now going to be starting a unit and series of lessons on trigonometric identities and equations. And we're going to begin this with trigonometric identities. First of all, what is an identity? A trigonometric identity is one where using different trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, we're able to e arrive at the same value, the same answer, in all cases where the domain exists using different functions. So the reason I put in there that where the domain exists is because in sine, uh, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, there are asymptotes present. So as long as the domain of the functions or operators that we're using exists, these identities will hold true. So we already know several trig identities, such as the reciprocal functions. Sine of theta is the same as 1 divided by the cos secant of theta. Cotangent of theta is 1 divided by the tangent of theta. So using these basic identities, we need to show that these statements below are true. So sine theta times secant of theta is equal to tangent of theta. Well, let's begin on the left-hand side. The sine of theta we will keep but we'll use an identity, reciprocal identity, for the secant of theta, and that is 1 divided by the cosine of theta. Now, multiplying these, we would end up with sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, which is the definition of tangent theta. So, using just the simple thing, we arrive at the same location. Let's try it for cosecant theta divided by secant theta equals cotangent theta. So cosecant theta is 1 divided by the sine of theta, and we're going to divide that by the secant theta, which is 1 over the cosine of theta. And we have to set that equal to 1 over the tangent of theta. Well, when we divide a fraction by a fraction, we simply multiply by its reciprocal. So we'll have 1 over sine theta times the cosine of theta divided by 1. And 1 over the tangent of theta will give us 1 over sine theta divided by cosine theta. Multiplying the left-hand side, we come out with cosine theta over sine theta right hand side when we divide by a fraction we multiply by its reciprocal so we have cosine theta divided by sine theta and here you see two different ways of proving an identity one of them is to simply work on one side of your equal sign until it looks like the other side the second is to manipulate both sides using valid rules of mathematics until the two arrive at the same location Either is valid, and both are very useful. Sometimes you're working along and you get to a point where you are stuck and can no longer move on. Then try and make the other side look like what you've just done. Let's take a look at a couple of others. One very common identity that is used in mathematics and when working in trigonometric relationships are the Pythagorean identities. And the Pythagorean identities are built as follows. If we pick any location on the unit circle given to us by some angle theta, we can construct a right triangle at that location that has an x value of the cosine of theta and a y value of the sine of theta. And since this is unit circle, our radius is 1. Now, according to the Pythagorean theorem, our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that means that the cosine squared of theta plus the sine squared of theta is equal to 1 squared. Now, a word of note. If you see notation such as this cosine squared theta what that interprets out to in your calculator would be the cosine of theta in parentheses and you square the entire work 
if you do not have the parentheses there, order of operations will say that we square theta, and then we take the cosine of that value. It is sizably different. So to shorten the notation when writing, we write cosine squared of theta, and it means the cosine of theta as a group squared. So if we have these different relationships where cosine of theta, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, we could use our commutative property of addition, say sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. What happens if we isolate sine squared? Well, that would simply give us that sine squared of theta equals 1 minus the cosine squared of theta. And we could get the same argument by isolating cosine. So using these, let's prove a couple of others. Let's prove that 1 plus the tangent squared of theta equals the secant squared of theta. And to do this, we're going to use identities that we already have. For instance, tangent squared of theta is simply sine squared theta divided by the cosine squared theta. And wanting to add things on the left-hand side, I can write 1 in any form I want. Conveniently at this time, that will be cosine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. Any number divided by itself is 1. Because I have the same denominator on the left, I can combine them into a single fraction, and I end up with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. Well, by our trigonometric identity, our Pythagorean identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1. So I end up with 1 divided by the cosine squared of theta, and 1 divided by cosine squared is secant squared of theta. Now let's do it for the next one. 1 plus the cotangent squared of theta equals cosecant squared of theta. Again, we're going to start with our cotangent. Cotangent squared of theta is going to be the reciprocal of the tangent squared, so we have cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. And 1, conveniently in this time, will be sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. Combining these, as I did before, I end up with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta divided by sine squared theta. Again, use my Pythagorean identity. This is 1 divided by sine squared of theta, which by definition is cosecant squared of theta. So anytime you need to prove something is true, you can build that using anything that you have had in the past. So, now that we've proved these are true, we can use them to prove further ones. So we're going to use properties that we know already to identify, to verify each identity. For instance, tangent squared theta minus sine squared theta equals tangent squared times sine squared of the thetas. So, let's start by rewriting tangent squared. Tangent squared theta is sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Now I can multiply anything by a form of 1 and retain its identity. So I'm going to go with sine squared theta times cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Combining my numerators, I end up with sine squared theta minus sine squared theta cosine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. Factoring my numerator, I can pull a sine squared theta out of both parts, leave me with 1 minus cosine squared of theta, all over cosine squared of theta. Now 1 minus cosine squared theta is sine squared, so I end up with sine squared theta times sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And if I have straight multiplication, I can break it into a fraction and a whole number. So I end up with sine squared theta over cosine squared 
theta times sine squared theta and sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared of theta times our sine squared of theta. So again, we worked down one side until it had a specific appearance and we made everything match on both sides through that process. Next up, let's look at secant squared minus secant squared, secant squared theta minus secant squared theta cosine squared theta equals tangent squared theta. And we're going to do this by starting with definitions of secant squared. So secant squared is 1 divided by cosine squared of theta. And we're going to subtract from that 1 over cosine squared of theta again times the cosine squared of theta. We can multiply the right hand ex part of that expression. So we have 1 over cosine squared theta minus the cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Now, because we have a common denominator of cosine squared theta, we have 1 minus cosine squared theta as our numerator. Well, 1 minus cosine squared theta is sine squared of theta, and sine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta is the definition of the tangent squared of theta. So sometimes we have to prove an identity and then we can use it in the future. Other times we have to simplify an expression just like we did with basic algebraic property. So we're going to write this trigonometric expression in its simplest form. The cosecant theta times tangent of theta. Only place I know to start with this is by definition of each one. So cosecant of theta is 1 divided by sine of theta. And tangent of theta is the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. Multiplying these through, we end up with sine theta divided by sine theta cosine theta. Simplifying this, the sine thetas will simplify to a value of 1, giving us 1 divided by the cosine of theta, and 1 divided by cosine of theta is secant of theta. So the cosecant of theta times the tangent of theta is simply the secant of theta. So we can use the properties to simplify expressions, or we can multiply, we can verify that one expression is equivalent to another through identities of equivalent value. So a lot going on here, a lot of thetas being thrown around, a lot of new methods of using the mathematics that you've refined this year. So take a look at it and see, make sure you have this down and are ready to use it.